Okay, let's look at the uh, SPY. As you guys can see, we've had this trading box, and we're finally breaking out. And um, I wouldn't say that I'm not. I've, I've been saying why we've been in this box due to the weekly, and you can check back. This is the one good thing about the videos. You know I'm not bullshitting you. Because I, you can actually look at my old videos and say, yes, he did have, always said he had a bullish bias based on the weekly. I just get nervous when everybody starts getting foaming at the mouth. Now, I will not short this, and I guarantee I'm not looking to short because, again, the trend is not to say to short. I'm not one of those guys going to say, I don't think he'd go any higher and get steamrolled. Absolutely not. I'll be long, but I'll be cautiously long because, again, what I wanted to see was this little little test back, maybe test the highs and then another breakup. So I think we'll, we'll get it. Uh, I just am cautious because, again, I feel that this rally is not something that is based on what we traditionally like to see in the, the stock market. I think that it's somebody lifting the tide is artificial. But either way, I'm still going to ride the tide. You know, I just kind of very leery. You know, I'll give you an example. Um, gold. You know, you can see that with gold, gold has gotten the snot kicked out of it. Uh, for a long time. Now, I remember back here, um, I went to a symposium in, at Duke, and I actually uh, was speaking to one of the guys that was was there, and I actually told him I think gold is bearish. He said, I would never short, short gold right here, right now. It went down, and I called him, and he said, well, you, you were right. I haven't looked at the charts in a long, little while. So, okay, fine. The second one was that I was at an outing, and um, one of my friend's mother was like, I'm going to take my money out of, you know, my savings and put it into gold and then I was like oh it's definitely a top now and uh, I always kind of get leery when the, the, the sentiment gets a little bit overly uh, ambitious or people start foaming at their mouth because of a certain thing and uh, I know people have been waiting but uh, again I just want to see a little bit of breakout above and see what it does because the week is very very early but the MACD is showing that we do have momentum in our favor so I, I definitely feel good about that and again I will not be shorting this I'm just saying I am cautious and maybe I'll always have a bearish notion but whenever I get too bearish I know there's a bottom coming in and that's just the way that I am so you can see with the QQQ uh, same thing it broke above these these high and it just ripped I mean I've, I've talked about you could look at my video around the 16th I said what we got one two three four there's a pattern I like to look at nice explosive explosive move to the upside going for new highs okay so you can look back a great great thing about the videos look around the 17th 18th uh, 16th to 17th uh, and you'll see that that I said that uh, the Russell uh, Russell didn't I thought it wasn't going to participate, but then it actually did pretty well. Uh, IWM to see the volume is back above the 10, back above the 50. So now you, you're just looking because, again, I said that this, this was a sloppy trend down. So you have a nice lower high right here, and it, it looks like, excuse me, higher low right here, and it ripped to the upside. Uh, the diamond, uh, the diamond, eh. Not really doing much, but again, I don't really need the diamond to do much because it's only consistent with those 30 stocks. I need the NASDAQ consistent of 100, but the, the uh, S&P consistent of 500 to give me some good moves. And you see a great moves in Apple. Apple continues to be ripping to the upside. I mean, from this buy point right here, I mean, it is up and it is up pretty big, you know, 5%. So again, I, I thought there would be some type of uh, pullback. You got a nice little inside day right now for Netflix. So this could be another opportunity if it breaks back above. Needs a little bit of rest. Facebook uh, really started really churning, doing well from this uh, higher low right here. Uh, that looks really good. You got Tesla. Tesla just grinding higher. I, I, I wasn't really, a, this didn't look as sexy as the other ones to me. But it's still uh, looking good. Let's see what this banking sector is doing. Uh, still kind of in no man's land. Uh, bullish MACD above the 10. But still, if you look, you know, you could say, okay, this is not a lot of volume. We, we need to see what this volume is. Or it's just bare flagging and might get back to this high. And then maybe it fills this gap. Maybe. And then it can roll over. But it's still un basically under the 50. So it's still kind of uh, not looking that good on the weekly chart. And you can see on the daily, it's actually under the 50. Uh, the Goldman Sachs, uh, Goldman Sachs gave you higher lows here, 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 here. Uh, still not one of the best patterns for me to trade, so that's why I didn't trade it. Uh, I was more, mostly looking at futures actually today, uh, looking at the grains and stuff. Those got beaten up. I think corn, yeah, corn fell off a map. I was looking at wheat and I was looking at, so I, I trade a bunch of different things because, again, if there's no patterns uh, for stuff and I kind of was 
tired of getting chopped up. So I was like, you know, let me go into something else because a chart is a chart. So I kind of just was looking at, at that stuff. But again, the uh, price line was ripping today. I mean, I was like, good God, it set this shit on fire today. I don't know what. Maybe somebody woke up. Somebody at the desk woke up or something because God knows they really, I mean, they really push this up with some high volume. So this one looks like it could definitely be just something that you're looking for a dip to buy back into. Uh, it looks Again, great on the weekly chart as well. So a lot of these these uh, high beta names, the quote unquote Momo names, look look really well today. So you just got to be again. I always have suspicion, um, but I do, would prefer for it to have a pullback, test the top of this box, then move up higher. Then we're looking to go good because again, you know, my bias is bullish, but I'm always cautious, especially after we've gone through all of this. Um, which you could say, God, you're, you're like one of those. I'm not that guy that if I win the lotto, I'm going to bitch about the taxes. I'm not that type of guy. I'm not that pessimistic. But I'm just careful and cautious because I know that these people that are controlling this market, are caught, when, they, when, they, when they fuck the market, they're not going to let us know. They're going to call all their friends. They're all going to liquidate this stuff like they didn't know it. Um, or they're not going to get hurt like we get our personal wealth hurt. So that's why I'm always cautious uh, because I see how dirty they could be. And it, maybe because I was naive or maybe because I was just younger in the game. But that's how I always look at things. So that's why I always stress and will always stress to you guys um, proper entry. So the biggest thing is people want, if you want to enter tomorrow on something like this, you're late. Point blank, you're late. If you're looking at the daily time frame, even if you're an intraday guys, you got to look at a small time frame or something to really get in. But that risk management, because if you're play, trading a breakout, it don't take much to squeeze out a breakout trader. So just be very, very cautious of that and make sure that you're getting the proper thing. And if you have to wait for proper setup, wait. There'll always be trades. There are thousands of trades. There are thousands of names you could trade. Don't go chasing one thing because you feel like you're late to the party. All right, take care.